Um, Sean, just looking at the history of uh, Air Oak in the Leinster Championship with those five titles, three of them have come against Dublin champions in that Leinster final. Mm. So surely if any club from Carlow is not going to be afraid, it's Air Oak. Yeah, um, yeah, I didn't realise it was three now. Um, Sylvester's, Croaks and Aaron's Isle. And they bet Belly Bowden in the semi-final uh, another year. You're well um, used to so, it. Yeah, well, the, but the lads are, unfortunately none of them are still playing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but I suppose our history and, uh, and the heritage of Air Oak or whatever, um, you wouldn't fear them. You wouldn't fear anybody, in fairness. Like, but obviously, it's a huge, huge um, task that we have uh, ahead of us. Mm. Um, there'll be club and three, you know, Belly Warden or like. Yeah, uh, All Ireland champions just yeah. a couple of years ago. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Were you old enough to remember any of those previous titles? Uh, yeah, I kind of. I went on, on the, I was on the buses, and I would have been ten for the last one. So right. I kind of a little bit. But again, I probably didn't appreciate what it was for. No, like obviously you look up to the guys. You're going out into the pitch afterwards and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, but it was all, it maybe kind of went over my head a little mm. bit, you know. But still, you'd have, uh, people in Airog just have a connection with the with the Leinster Championship because of it, I suppose. So, mm. um, every time I played in the, in the Leinster Championship, it was it was just added a little bit extra, you know. Mm. It was special. That last one was in 1998, so you were 10 at that point. Mm. So, you're, you're tipping 30, 31 now. 31 now, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're going well still. I'm doing all right, still moving okay. Mm. So, but I suppose that would have planted the seed for you in terms of wanting to become a footballer, that generation. And uh, would there be much of a crossover between players of that generation and players of the current generation? Yeah, uh, look, it was huge for me. Obviously, they were your, your idols growing up. Mm. Um, there'd be a huge connection with father and son and, and uncles and, and nephews and that kind of thing. So, you have Joe, obviously, a manager who has a son and his nephew on it, um, and Jordy and Jordy Morrissey and Jordan Morrissey. And you'd, Derek Hayden and, and his father Joe and, and Willie and, and Niall. Um, yeah, so there was, there was crossover everywhere. Mm. Um, um, potentially Seamus Lowry was involved. Thurlow Brian and Dara. Jeez, forget Thurlow. <laughs> <True. laughs> <Turlo, yeah. laughs> Happened so easily. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to forget anyone else. But what's, what's the difference between this time last year when you lost to Mullinock by 17 points? Now, you got a couple of red cards early in the game, which of course changes everything. Yeah. But what's the difference between then and now? Um, look, the, 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 nothing went right that day. I would still say that Bull Knock, they were a better side than mm. us. Um, but if you dogs still drown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I suppose it... <laughs> physically, we just warmed up, up to it. We, we, we kind of got bullied that day um, early on, and that probably led to a bit of frustration that ended in, in the discipline issues. Um, so we've worked on that usually over the past year. We're, we're a bigger side now. Um, there's an awful lot of people doing a lot of work outside of the collective sessions that we have, and that seems to have stood to us. Um, we've trained. Is that conditioning? You're yeah, talking all about? conditioning. Mm. Yeah. No, it probably doesn't look like it on me, but uh, the rest of the boys. You're ripped. Yeah. Um, but uh, even in terms of fitness levels, we seem to be pushing on at the end of games where other teams are faltering a little bit. So mm. there's something there. Um, we have a lot of work done this year. Mm. Um, I suppose the mindset. Because of that, you know, when you're doing the extra bit, you do feel more prepared and, and more ready for it. So it's helped both by psych psychologically and, and physically. Because mm. I would have said that any time you're like people often talk about uh, getting making sure there are no doubts before matches. So it's not like you get more confidence by doing the extra nutrition in the gym. It's just you have fewer doubts, so you go out there with a clearer mind. Mm. Yeah, it, it certainly it clears the head, and it, it say what you like about it. When, when, when lads are lifting weights and all the rest, you do feel a little bit mm. more confident in yourself and all the rest. So that, that helps. It, it takes away one negative, I suppose. And when you think about Bally Bowden, like you think of a hugely conditioned team, like mm. most Dublin clubs are, and it's something Desi Dolan talked about after they, his Gary Castle team were beaten well by Bally Bowden. So you'd probably be facing a real uphill task if you weren't. Like, have you noticed how conditioned they are? Yeah, well, I listened to, to Desi's um, interview as well, and he did say that it was uh, he couldn't get over it and mm. how big they were. So maybe I'm going to be uh, surprised. Mm. Um, but look, they're definitely. They've been at this a lot longer than we have, I suppose. Like to be champions, all Ireland champions three years ago, they obviously had done something back then, you know. Um, so we're, we're getting there and we're, we're, we're going in the right direction. We, we did play each other earlier on the year and um, we had a really good uh, tussle. Ended up in a draw down in Air Oak. Now they were missing um, their county players and we, had a, we were missing a couple as well. So probably you didn't see all of, like we didn't show, no one showed um, their hand completely, but yeah, look, we've. we've Locked horns already, so. Mm. And there is a sort of a Bally Bowden link within your team, isn't there? Colin Hulton. 
No, he's Ballymun. Oh, Ballymun. Yeah, sorry, one yeah. of the other lads told me that he actually had played for Ballyboden for a while. But uh, sorry, as in one of the other journalists right. <laughs> telling me Porky's. But uh, yeah, he he he'd, uh, <laughs> ambitions was it to play with uh, Dublin? I yeah, he, he wanted to play with Dublin. He originally played with Airog and, and was with Airog all the way up uh, yeah. as a juvenile. Um, I think he was around. She would have been seventeen around that age, and he went up to Dublin for a couple of years. Maybe he was eighteen. Mm. Um, but he did. He was on the minor panel for for a couple of years. Uh, probably didn't start an awful lot of games, but started a couple, you know. So he was at that level, which w- would would be very good. Um, didn't, I suppose, in terms of travel and all that kind of stuff. He was still living in Cardo and heading up to Ballymun for training, and it probably got a bit much. And mm. he decided to come home. And look, he'd be very friendly with with the lads. Um, he'd have a lot of friends on the team, so. I suppose it just kind of made sense to come mm. back to it. Would would he have played with any Ballyboden guys that were on the panel at that point? Well, he put, yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. That, that's the connection that he. he I'm sure there was Ballyboden lads in a minor Dublin team at that yeah. time. Yeah, so um, there, gen- there generally are. Yeah. What, what about your performance against Port Leash? As the game went on, it just like you started off like a house on fire. Had one one on the board before mm. before mm. anyone mm. had time to even get into their seats. Yeah, Br- brilliant goal by Chris Blake. The sort of thing that the sort of shot you'd only hit in a warm up uh, before a match when you're yeah, just no, messing no, about. Chris, no, Chris is uh, is full of confidence, and it's like I suppose we spoke spoke with the Mullinock game. Like we had the same opportunities against Mullinock and didn't take them. Mm. Uh, I felt we were. We were by far the better team for the first 15 minutes um, and then they just completely dominated us after that but we had no score on the board to show for it after the 15 mm. whereas and Chris himself had a chance last year to go for goal and, and he actually said I'd love to just get another chance like I did last year early in the game and it was 21 seconds or something but it, like even the camera angle to be right behind it it was, it was a great finish yeah it was yeah, he's a confident fella like that, as that game wore on you just seemed like obviously it was tight-ish for a while, but mm. then towards the very end, you just started to pull away. It just seemed like a really a, a team really sure of what you're doing. Yeah, um, uh, they kind of really got on top of our kick out, um, mm. and it was probably down to our own movement, our own midfield. We kind of we didn't. It was lads jumping together, which never happened. Yeah. We just kind of lost our way for for a little while. We just refocused at half time, had, had a word with each other, and came out in the second half. And we just kind of have that confidence that we know we're not. We're not going to get tired. We have the work done, and that seems to be the way. And we ended up kicking on. Now, Portlaoise had obviously men sent off, uh, which didn't help. Um, and like we were, after looking at all their games, and they were into it. They should obviously go over St Pat's and penalties, and then it was only a, a point of a collision. And, and Port Arlington and, and St Joseph's was not in it, so we knew that they were going to go fighting to the end. Mm. I suppose when the couple of men were sent off, it, it, it kind of killed the spirit a little bit. Um, but again, like. What they have done in, in Leash has been outrageous, and Leinster uh, over the last decade. Mm. So, yeah. You know, there there probably be this kind of from the outside looking in, and, and I'm sure you don't think this way, but a oh, Dublin team is definitely going to beat a Carlow team. You know, it, like is that something you're feeling from from the outside that people just assume that you're going to lose this? Um, well, look, I suppose we've only been paired against each other for a little while, but there was people telling me that um, that it'll be very hard to see anyone beat Ballyboard this year, even and maybe. the People I was talking, I didn't even know we were in it at the time. Like so, mm. um, there's always that perception, and people who who don't know what the club championship is all about would have that. And fair enough, like they've got the bigger population and they have the history and all that kind of stuff. And all the champions, like so, it's uh, it's understandable that they'd have that opinion. <coughs> but the, the club championship kind of it, it's more played on more of a level playing field than mm. than inter county. Um, it is it's it's our parish against their parish, so. Mm. Look, um, I've no doubt, like they're obviously big favourites and all that kind of stuff, but we're in with a squeak, but I, like I said, we, we have a better chance than anyone else in Leinster. That's true, very true. Like, you know when a few years ago when you played Dublin in the Leinster Championship and yeah. it was was it something like 17 minus to 9, so, something in that Yeah, range, but, anyway. uh, they kicked away at the end, but like the, it was, we were three points down at half time. And it yeah. Was, yeah, we were close, we were about 10 minutes, 15 minutes ago, but they wouldn't put away. See, this is the thing, much like now, people would have assumed that you would have gotten annihilated back then, like let's say Longford the year before, I think I'd lost by 27 points. Mm. Everyone thought you were going to get annihilated. D- was it only after you played them and realised you were able to live in this company? Did that give you more confidence? Ah, but it definitely did. Um, now, like, we were we did change our uh, our game plan a little bit that day and it was it was quite defensive and we had to be. Like mm. Longford went out and tried to we're gonna I think the manager actually said we're gonna have a good go at these. Did, good yeah. go at these. Jack Sheedy did yeah. at the time. Like you just you have to suit your game to who you're playing and you can't really leave yourself too open against Dublin. So that's what kept us in and they struggled to break us down. But it did say look, if we can we're able to do this, if we can develop this, who knows what might happen. Mm. And like 
we, we really put uh, Monaghan to the pin of the colour. Now, I know Monaghan are a, a similar size population as us, um, so you'd be expecting to do that, but they have Division 1 for a long time now, mm. and they're, they're a very good side. So, um, we have rattled a few, and Kildare, obviously, and like we've beaten a good few teams that are above us, and I suppose it helped. Mm. But yeah, poetry, poetry, in fairness, has helped that, the, uh, and brought on a belief as well as Turlough, um, and it's something that probably came back to Airog now then. Um, we don't fear anyone. And just then one final question, what is the future for Carlo? Because you know you mentioned Stephen Poacher there, he's, he's left and he's involved down minors. Um, the tier two is, is coming in, so the pressure is on in, in the sense of either get to a provincial final or get up to division two. Mm. What, what is the future for Carlo? Well, look, right now I suppose the lads, it's, it's the day before we played it, they have the first round of the Burn Cup, they're already back doing a bit, but um, we're focused on the league. Just focus on the league, try to get out of Division 4 um, this year again. What happens in Tier 2, we, we don't know what that's going to be like, you know, that kind of way, but it's going to be an opportunity for us. Like, you can talk all about it all you want, but it's in now, so when it's there, we're going to give it a good rap. Now, the, the realisation, like, we're probably going to be in it. Like, we have to go and beat Offaly, Kildare, and then be, uh, win a, a semi final mm. just to not enter it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a fair task, like, it won't be easy. So, it, it's probably that we'll be in it. Um, so be it. We'll, ch- we'll take that challenge when it comes and um, I'm sure if we're in a final all the Carlo people will be seeing how big of a competition it is and how important it is so we'll see, we'll see uh, what happens when it comes that's it and best looking in the Leinster final thanks a million cheers, cheers.